Greeting and welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of the Cultural Flavors. Ramadan edition. I'm your host, Dr. Mohamed Al Gattan. And I'm your co host, Iman Marafi. So, Iman, how is Ramadan with you going so far? Actually, it's going great. Good. How come? I'm spending more, fam more time with my family. And uh, I have a lot of time to do like some cooking or stuff like that. Okay, because this and is your hobby, right? Yeah, Good. actually, yeah. Good. And after iftar, I go to the uh, gym, so it's me time. Good. I'm enjoying it. So this is good. This is yeah. why I would like to advise all my day viewers to really exercise and do physical activity as much as you could. Yeah, you do that. Excellent. <laughs> so Iman, which uh, country are we talking about today? Well, today's country is going to be about the Republic of India. Interesting. Which is uh, a great country, actually. Yes. And it has a lot of things that are similar to us in during Ramadan. Uh huh. And, and I, I would like to know more about what are some traditional things that they could do that could be probably different from Kuwait. Yeah, me too. When when we have our guests, actually, we will ask them a lot of questions about that. I hear something that they break their fast with the salt. So yes. We're gonna this find is out why. Really, like strange. We don't have this here, but like in the. Uh, the, the Islamic culture, we do have that. We will find the reason. Yes. So, dear viewers, let's go watch this report and we'll be back. So, please stay tuned. India, one of the world's most beautiful and diverse nations in the world. From the busy streets of Mumbai and Kolkata to historic forts in Rajasthan, vibrant bazaars in Delhi, to quiet villages in Himachal Pradesh and Odisha. Soaked in history and culture, while confidently embracing the 21st century, India is a country that can be explored for years and will surprise you at every corner. India is a diverse country, and different regions celebrate Ramadan in their unique way. Ramadan is a significant month for Muslims in India and it is celebrated with great enthusiasm and devotion. The month-long fast, iftar, taraweeh, acts of charity, and the festive atmosphere make Ramadan a unique and special time in India. In India, Ramadan is celebrated with great enthusiasm and devotion by the Muslim community. Both the suhoor and iftar meals contain a variety of snacks appetizers, drinks, and desserts. Full of flavor and goodness, the food is either served at home along with family, in the mosques, or other designated places. In some parts of India, haleem, a popular dish made of wheat and meat, is a traditional iftar food. In other regions, people break their fast with dates, fruits, and sherbets. Kima samosa or minced meat samosa is a must-have during Ramadan. No iftar celebration is complete without this snack. Sheer korma is a rich moglai dessert made during Ramadan, where sheer stands for milk and korma stands for dates. The texture and sweetness of this dessert is so unique that it prides to have many foodie fans during the holy month. For a drink, Ruh Afza is a common sherbet prepared during Ramadan. It includes herbs, fruits, veggies, flowers, and roots. Its brilliant fragrance, special flavor, and cooling effect make it unique and special from the other drinks.
and welcome back dear viewers after watching the report i hope you enjoyed the report about the republic of india as much as we did and today we have our esteemed guest mrs amna and mr thaqab welcome Thank, Thank you very you. much for having us here. So we're so glad and so excited to talk about the Republic of India, especially in Ramadan. Yes. So in the beginning, can you tell us about yourself? Mm -hmm. So with, with the, with the, the lady, let the lady, <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> you're talking and then give me the opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, so it's very hard to tell a little about myself because whenever I start to speak and start to introduce, I realize there is so much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the one good introduction would be that I've lived all my life here in Kuwait. Okay. And Were you born here? Yes. And did, you went to school here. Uh, I did go to India for my master's. Mm -hmm. um, I did master's in physics and then I came back to the country I love. All right. Which is Kuwait. And you have a TV show at KTV2. Yes, I do. All right. I do enjoy. I'm living a dream. I work with Kuwait TV2 oh, nice. uh, as a presenter for the program uh, in Bollywood. Okay. Um, I also do some workshops, uh, which is about conducting workshops on collaboration, teamwork, mm -hmm. and I I always wanted to teach. It was a dream uh, that I wanted to teach, but I didn't really get an opportunity here in the university. So, um, you know, as Allah would want it, He gave me a better opportunity. Now, instead of school students, I teach corporate employees uh, and I do these collaboration uh, sessions for companies. Nice. That's great. Yep. So let's move on to Mr. Thakur. Yes. Uh -huh. What can I say about myself? <laughs> <laughs> More than uh, India, I've lived all my life again here in Kuwait. Uh, my grandmother used to be here with uh, all four of her sons and two daughters oh, in the awesome. 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, when he came here with his brother, he came on a ship. Okay. I still have that ticket, oh. uh, the ship ticket from uh, Port of Bombay to Port of uh, Kuwait. Wow, this is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, so my father has been here all his life, uh, maybe 60 plus years. I'm here since birth, wow. grew up in this country. So I'm assuming both of you speak Arabic. Uh, help as he, much as we need to. <laughs> well. He's being modest. He speaks very fluently, okay. uh, fluently. But of course, my Arabic is limited to ordering food. All right. Ya bi laham majbus. All right. That's good. Here you go. Most important. It's a good start. <laughs> but you do understand that, like, right? Yes. Yeah, I understand. But uh, speaking is. So let's move on to talk about the Republic. Uh, of India, especially in Ramadan. I would like to know more about it. So what are some traditional things that happen in India in Ramadan? Well, uh, do you know the unique thing which we need to understand uh, the difference between Kuwait and Ramadan, and, and, uh, Ramadan in, in India correct. is that we, here we live in a country where uh, everyone around us is fasting and observing a Ramadan. Correct. So I may not be far away from the numbers to say that I think 80% of the people around us Correct. are all fasting and observing exactly. uh, Ramadan, which is totally opposite in India. How come? Uh, we have a large Muslim population in India. Yeah. Maybe I think it's the second, right? Second largest in the world. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, more than 200 million, I believe. Yet, uh, it's a small minority of the one billion. Uh, yes. So uh, <laughs> I would say maybe 15 to 18 percent people are fasting, and the rest of the world is around us okay. is not. Okay. Which kind of makes it more difficult, challenging, to, and yes. challenging to observe yeah. the fast. Exactly. And maybe you have to put in more uh, yeah. efforts to yeah. to do this. Correct. Uh, and so I'm hoping that there's more sawab. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the, with which the, makes the. Uh, Right. Yeah. Because for instance, uh, you know, uh, Ram, uh, you know how we have work timings are lessened here in India. It's the same. The same. School is the same. So, like you were mentioning, for children, you know, who do fast, uh, it is it's quite it's challenging, challenging. Because imagine you're a child, and you're going to school, and you're seeing everyone else eating. Mm. So I do believe that it creates a set of discipline mm. that I value a lot. So what it's about? Yeah, I'm just wondering to know. Probably, is there, are people eat freely, do probably try to hide, not to, to be, you know, to respect your religion or not? It's, it's, it's fine, it's a normal day. It's a normal day. It's a normal day. It's a normal day. Yeah. All right, there is, there is but, a challenge. It yes. is, but I would say it doesn't bother me also because, you know, if you think about it, mm -hmm. you fast because you want to. Yes. 
and as long as that is the in, the intent is clear yeah then it doesn't matter exactly. who's doing what exactly. or not. Yeah, yeah because the at the end we are abiding the rules of Allah yes. so this is what we all want correct it's about self discipline in yes. the end yeah. so whatever the challenge is the idea exactly. is for the person to discipline himself exactly. not to right. fall uh, for, the for the temptation yes. interesting yeah <laughs> so like during the holy month of ramadan in india do you have specific uh, specific places that you go to I would say masjid. Ah, okay, this probably yeah, this is going to be yes. Is after it after Fatur or before like for for praying the uh, Maghrib and Isha. So yes, throughout the day actually. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're working, it's a normal day. It's hard to go to the masjid. Yes. But during uh, for iftar, mm -hmm. everyone gathers. Okay. Uh, like, oh, so you do have your like breaking the fast is there in the masjid. You eat Fatur there. Yes. Okay. Eat Fatur there and then followed by Maghrib prayer. So what about uh, visiting your relative or? your family member yes. this is something common yes uh not as much as the the tradition of gafka here okay but uh, we <laughs> gafka here is really yes, something yeah. very we would like to yeah. be uh, actually ambassadors when we introduce these uh, traditions back when we go to our own countries right uh, because it's, it's such uh, there's so much uh, value and richness in this tradition correct or to meet with your family and gather them and it's a sunnah and this is yeah, actually yeah. this is the beauty of ramadan that we get together we yeah. spend a good time and together. you know we love this life yes especially at night yes, yes. and then our curfew as girls or women yeah. uh, changes correct so we can come back at one or something sometimes <laughs> right exactly and you know probably everybody here uh, are busy during the year Hmm. And probably the really good chance that we spend a good time or quality time with family is in the holy month of Ramadan. True. So move on to the food. Do hmm. you have any specific food that you serve in Ramadan or any drinks or any sweet hmm. in India that people do? So during Ramadan, I would say we open our iftar with something called the halim. Okay. Which is consist of what? So it is, um, <coughs> it's mutton broth. Uh, but it has mixed with not regular wheat, but like the shredded kind of wheat. And it's supposedly a very healthy drink. So everybody, and it's served there in the mosque itself, and huge, huge vessels of soup are made, and they are served in, uh, in bowls, and everyone gets it, and it's all ready. So when the azan comes, everyone it's lifts their bowl it. and breaks their fast this is served by the mosque itself right it's uh, by the people yeah. uh, okay so i'm gonna in the introduction with with my colleague um, uh, iman i mentioned that to our dear viewers that people in india they break their fast with salt that is true we sorry would like to know, yes. uh, first, first of all that's true and why is that yeah Yes, so yes, before the soup comes the salt. In fact, before anything, you open your fast with salt. Okay. And that is true. And the reason behind that is, see, you know, these days, oh, everyone drinks water with their food. Mm. Now, water is, you should not drink water. Okay. Because your food needs to be digested by peptic acids yes. in your stomach. And, you know, chemistry teaches us that if you put water on any acid, it gets diluted. Yes. And if acid is diluted, then it weakens its power. So now the food that would have gotten digested in half an hour uh -huh. is now going to take longer because you're drinking so much water with it. So never drink water with your food. Either drink water half an hour before or after. Yes. Now, the problem with not drinking water is people say, oh, uh, you know, it becomes dry. Uh -huh. How do we gulp the food down? It doesn't go down. So we have to push water in so that then the reason why your mouth is getting dry is because there isn't enough saliva. Uh -huh. And that's the trick with the okay, salt. Okay, so the salt is the reason for the saliva. Saliva to come. So okay. try it. Next time when you sit down to eat, take a little bit of salt in your right hand's index finger. Oh, just a tiny bit? Just yeah, a just little, tiny. like this, like few pecks. Yeah. And you keep it on the tip of your tongue. Mm. Okay. And you will see the saliva gushing in, all that there in your mouth. When you keep your first bite, you will see that the saliva starts to mix Flop. with it. Yeah. And the saliva has those digestive properties which your stomach also doesn't have. So it helps to break down the food. And then you chew your food 32 times at least and break it down enough to be able to digest your food. And also from the salt because you get also the minerals. And like 99% of the minerals we get it from sea salt. Mm -hmm. Correct. Also like uh, 
the Himalayan salt. Yes. So, so Ivan, do you break your fast with the salt? Actually, it's not only during Ramadan. Oh. It's like even in the regular like days. Exactly. But sometimes every I forget. I, I will try. It's not every time. <laughs> sometimes we forget, but like we do that. I will try tomorrow. Try it. We'll do that. <laughs> exactly. In my home, we've been doing it all our lives. Uh, every wow. meal. This is something. This, this is, is something, a good thing. Yeah, this long time ago or something really. If you have it as a sunrise, it's a reason. No. To have uh, you know Let salt and then begin your meal. So right. We grew up with this book called the Forty Lessons, the Chahal Sabak, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the chapters is about eating and drinking. And in that, it says start your every meal with a, with salt, a peck of salt. But this is good advice to our dear yeah. viewers that. You could break your fast with salt, and this is gonna it probably increase the digestive, right? Yes. We'll do that, and hopefully, all the reviewers will try it. So, let what me know else? how that goes. Yeah, it will. <laughs> so, move on. Dishes, any food that's unique in Holy Month of Ramadan? So, yes. Let's talk about uh, the street uh, food festival yes. in India. Actually. Oh, you have street food here, yes. Allah. Especially <laughs> in Ramadan, because. Uh, you know, this is unique, like uh, we have the, the Girgian and the Kapka, yeah, so you need yeah. to, to create yeah. the tradition. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, in India, what happens is, uh, outside all the important masajid, uh -huh. you'll have the streets which are closed for business and lined up with food stalls. So you have food stalls for maybe a kilometer or two kilometers. I mean, there, is, there was a very uh, important TV program on Kuwait TV called Muhammad Ali Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. This Muhammad Ali Road, uh, in Bombay, it's a few kilometers and it's all packed with street food, which comes to life from iftar uh -huh. up to suhoor. Mashallah. And you are fasting or you're not fasting. So it's not only for those 15%, yeah, it's yeah, for the yeah. whole, whole population. population. <laughs> it's not everybody's agenda. Everybody's eating. To go to Muhammad Ali Road in Ramadan or a similar uh, important street in their own cities, uh -huh. because every city has got this culture, uh -huh. and uh, do the iftar and suhoor meals uh -huh. uh, on these. Uh, and probably streets. the variety of food, like so sweet, like main dishes. So people during Ramadan, le they like less cook or like less because cook. they eat outside? Yes, I would say that they le cook less in the house um, because also there's one meal less. So yes. instead of three meals, now you're two. cooking only for two meals. So mm -hmm. they only do iftar mm -hmm. uh, and suhoor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also now, like you said, iftar is mostly, hey, let's grab a little outside. But also, you know, you visit family and friends mm -hmm. and then have iftar with me, the other person have iftar with me. And so also that's yeah. less. That's yeah. very interesting to know. So talking about food in every episode, my colleague Iman prepared a dish for us. So Iman, what do you have for us today? Well, actually today it's going to be a shrimp with uh, noodles. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the ingredients now. After the break, hopefully, uh, we will come back and then I will tell you the ingredients. So dear viewers, stay tuned, don't go away. back dear the viewers and as my colleague Iman promised us that she's gonna tell us about her dish as well as her ingredients. So Iman could you tell us about your dish today? Well today's dish is a little bit like a it's I, I think it's it either Italian or something I mean, anyways it's a it pasta. It should be healthy huh? Yeah it is yeah, healthy. Right. <laughs> yes. It could be eaten for futur or like after mm -hmm. and uh, it's a pasta usually and today's pasta is gluten-free Okay. So for people who have allergies, they can eat it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to uh, first put ghee, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to stir the like uh, the spices, which is uh, curcumin, mm -hmm. uh, paprika, which actually is smoked paprika, mm -hmm. and black pepper, 
oregano, uh, minced garlic, and ginger. And then after I stir them, I finish, and then I'm going to add the shrimps. Okay. Just a little stir, not too much, because for me, I don't know about others, uh, it's better not to be like real done, well done. It's like a little bit crunchy. True. And then you can add the mushrooms, the uh, corn, mm -hmm. to whatever you're liking, mm -hmm. and then we'll mix the pasta with it, and that's it. Okay. It's easy. It should be delicious. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Yes. Yeah, it's easy good. actually. And Healthy as well. And you'll get yeah. the chance to try it. Oh, that's okay. wonderful. Exactly. Good. Because normal circumstances, I will never get to try it. <laughs> because my wife won't allow me to eat carbohydrates. <laughs> okay. oh. <laughs> no, the less in carbs. <laughs> Neither the proteins on the show. All right. Uh, so, my yeah. lucky day today All for right. inviting me. 100 Perfect. grams of carbs from uh, the pasta is uh, 73. Uh, I mean, the 100 grams of uh, pasta is 73 carbs. Perfect. Okay. So it's not that much. Also, I noticed you're using ghee, which I believe is a much more healthy mm -hmm. fat than, than regular oils. Yes, because they are hydrogenated, and I don't use that. Mm -hmm. We use olive oil, butter, or ghee. Perfect. Same like me. <laughs> so this is our advice to our dear viewers. Eat healthy. Yeah. So keep going talking about the holy month of Ramadan in India. I would like to know, are there any similarities in the food-wise between India and Kuwait, especially in the cuisine, in the holy month of Ramadan? Uh, I struggle to find similarity because they're both very different. Okay. Uh, and if you ask me how, exactly, I would say the spices. All right. Uh, that's the differentiating factor because rice, Kuwait has. India has rice too. The same, yeah, exactly. But it's but. the spice that makes it totally different, okay. right? So, uh, in uh, Ramadan, there is nothing similar between uh, what we eat in Kuwait and India. Okay. India has, a, yes, a lot of sweets. Okay. Kuwait has a lot of sweets Absolutely. also. Absolutely, something very important. But again, very different. Mm -hmm. So. I would say we get to eat the best of both worlds. Exactly. <laughs> In a way, it's good that yeah. it's different. It is. It, it is. Yeah. Yes. Kuwait, you cannot miss the Vimto. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> when you see Vimto in the Jamaia, you know Ramadan is approaching. Exactly. <laughs> so I would like to know more about that. People serve uh, food in a, in a big dish uh, or in a big plate. Mm, yes. So could you tell me more about that? I would love to share that. But uh, before that, I also want to tell Iman the garlic, wow. It smells good, right? <laughs> oh, the garlic is melting in the yes. tea and With it's the giving this aroma. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, yes, we are. We started to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, back to your question. You mentioned this big, huge plate, which is true. We call it the thal. Okay. And uh, it's circular. Oh, thal? Thal. Okay. Yes. And it's uh, it's uh, quite a big diameter like that. Okay. Eight people can sit. One meter in diameter. Uh -huh. so normally stainless steel, sometimes okay. aluminum. Uh huh. And yes, as she said, eight people sit around it, and we all eat from the same plate. 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 Uh, so the idea is, people, family gets together mm -hmm. and you share. All right. And, uh, the spirit of Ramadan and the spirit of sharing exactly. is uh, so well expressed in this. And, and, get, and probably sitting to each other. This yes, will make close us close to each other. Exactly. It's sure. something really unique. So close to each other, also preferably on the floor. On the floor. So you know uh, how you eat with your le one leg up, which uh -huh. kind of presses your stomach okay. enough so that you don't overeat. Okay. Right? So that's one of the traditions. Okay. The other thing is, you know, now the salt. Uh -huh. Um, the other thing is we pile up whatever we're going to eat. So let's say the dish is rice. So the rice will be like in the center, okay. like a mountain. And everyone will take a little from that. And in their space, in the thal, in their little space, uh -huh. they will eat. Nice. And they say the best thing to do is finish it all, not to leave even a morsel. Because Very good. none of it should Because that, that is really the values that uh, we want to promote in Ramadan. Yeah. I mean, you're not, uh, you, we do this to develop empathy mm -hmm. to people who don't get uh, two square meals. So uh, it is important wasting. to control wastage of food. And probably yeah. eat with your hand. Yes. Eat with our hands and finish the food that is Same. that comes that down on the it. tray. Correct. So what has what comes on the plate has to be completed. Yeah, yeah, or don't take. Perfect. Well, during Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan in Kuwait, like have you participated in any of the community like like uh, uh, yep. Occasions like Kirkian <laughs> or Ghavkia, yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, so, you know, companies uh, do have, corporate do have their celebration. Mm -hmm. So, I've uh, also been invited to many Gabgas, but also 
I've uh, liked to host Gabgas. Okay. So we do have Gabgas in our home sometimes, right. or you know, if we can take a larger hall and invite all our friends and family there. Okay. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. In fact, so. these are such uh, beautiful traditions yeah. which we we have grown up around. Correct. So we didn't know that these are very specifically Kuwaiti traditions. Correct. But uh, as we realize this, now we love to take these to Back other country. countries we travel to yeah. and introduce. Uh, my friends in India or my friends in Europe that uh, you know right. Ramadan this is, yeah. this is a have, uniqueness uh, right very very yes. unique to to our uh, country here Okay. So, and Girgian, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law meticulously prepares all these sweet bags <laughs> because she knows all the children are going, going to come. come. Yeah. So yes, we have it all ready in They're our house. The door, yes. And do you let them sing? <laughs> uh, yes. And give them names. I actually tell them you're not going to get anything if you don't sing. You have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so now they know. This is interesting. So Toby, I just have a really concern now. If the if the uh, uh, working day are the same, as well as school as the same, so people here in Kuwait we could sleep a little bit late because now that the work is a little bit late, could start from eight thirty, nine nine thirty, we could sleep late, we could eat. What about this in India? How could you find this challenge? So probably uh, students have to go to bed early to go and to to, to sleep early, then to, to to wake up early and catch up. The, the school system. Yes, I believe that we are kind of privileged to be in Kuwait Correct. and be in this environment. Correct. Uh, otherwise, this is the real world. So you have to adjust. face up and live in you, the real world. Anywhere you, you go outside, yeah. that is the reality. Exactly. Uh, I lived in Glasgow for, for my education for a while. And for me, Kuwait and India were still more closer to the equator. So, you know, the, the, the length of the day is approximately the same. Correct. But you go north, up north, and my brother lives in Calgary. Yeah. Sometimes in winters, it's gonna be the Ramadan, is the, uh, the day is maybe five hours and exactly. six hours. In the summer, it can be 19, 20, longer 20 hours. Longer hours, yes. yes. Mm. So if you are going to be fasting yeah. in Glasgow. the summer in, Gla uh, in Glasgow or Calgary, you'll be tired. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a challenge in itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Correct. Especially if you're working or something like my cousin, uh, she's a doctor, so she had to like study and work in the hospital during the holy month of Ramadan in London. So it, it's like, it, it's yeah, it's challenging. So what we have here is a blessing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My mother has, uh, I have two other brothers. One lives in Canada, one lives in London. Perfect. And my mother lived to live between all her sons. Yeah. She makes sure that Ramadan, she has to be in Kuwait. Exactly. You cannot travel anywhere else. Yeah. So you have to be here because this is the best place, I believe, for... Uh, we are fortunate, we are fortunate to live in this country that the country that provided the whole everything for us to really live in a good way. So let's go to see how is my colleague Imad doing so far. I'm actually almost done. Oh, it's oh, it doesn't yummy. take a lot of time, yeah. yeah. So after the break, I will uh, just assemble all those together mm. and then uh, we're good to go. Perfect. Excellent. I'm waiting for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a few moments, they will be there. Yeah. So, dear viewers, we're going to have a short break and we're going to continue the episode of Culture Flavors. So, please don't go away. Ramadan Karim, everyone. During Ramadan, food is in the heart and taste buds of everyone in Kuwait. And not only Kuwait, but everyone around the world. It is a main dish and it is where we excel. The one thing that you'll find on every iftar table is delicious savory appetizers as well as sweet desserts. In terms of appetizers, there is one that people fight over, which is sambusa, or some people like to call it samusak or samosas. There are thin dough pastries filled with delicious fillings, such as spiced meats, 
cheese or vegetables. They're fried until they're crispy and give you a crunch with each bite. Not only that, you've got kubab and some people even excel with soups. They create new and different soups to incorporate to provide a filling start to your iftar meal. So join us as we take a tour to show you all the different foods found on your iftar table. Thank you for joining us during this amazing food tour where we showed you some of the favorite foods people eat during Ramadan. I hope you enjoyed it and get to try them. Happy Ramadan! And we're back dear viewers. Uh, I like want to ask you about like uh, during the holy month of Ramadan for sure I know that you had interactions with Kuwaiti people and other non-Kuwaiti people yes. uh, have you ever shared a share as in like uh, nuqsa uh, like serving food giving them food cooking something and receiving something absolutely that's something <laughs> we do throughout Ramadan uh -huh. and do you do that like do you cook them Indian food or do you cook them something Kuwaiti I cook Indian oh, okay. and in return I get whatever they have there and so we try and maintain this you know so that they get a little flavor of what we do in India Yeah. and uh, we have so many different nationality neighbors you know Kuwait is a great amalgamation of so many nationalities that's very nice so uh, yes we get their dishes in fact even the dresses you know we dress up differently so like today we are wearing Indian Correct. Um, and when we call them uh, to our house we ask them to wear their national dress Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's a mixed theme. It's a mix. Yeah. Yes. And how, have you tried the al gamat or Haris? This is something really traditional food in Kuwait. Have you tried something like that? Did you like it? Do you, do you really would like to try it? Or I love it. Good. I love it. Good. We've tried it, yes. yes. And we've been invited. What's the most thing you like? So, you know, um, Saqib has a business partner who is Kuwaiti mm -hmm. and uh, his wife is so, so hospitable. She is, she'll always invite us and she exposes me to all the Kuwaiti traditions, Correct. you know, even uh, the gahwa, yeah. the way she brings, like she'll bring all her snacks in all packaged. So even when she comes to my house, she brings everything and I'm like, stop it, don't do that. You, know? <laughs> you invited to my house, That's it. I will serve you. Exactly. And she's like, it's our tradition that we always take something, uh -huh. even if you don't to ask me to Perfect. so she's always you know bringing and introducing me to the idea of bukur for right. instance mm -hmm. so she uh, all her gifts to me during ramadan are the bukur yes. she also gave me this you know what uh, women wear uh, for uh, namaz yes okay. during prayer yes like it's a full thing the headscarf the sleeve Correct. everything right and it's a very new concept india doesn't have it mm. so when she gifted that to me i was like how convenient is that you could just wear it and you'd be ready so now i'm gifting it everywhere in india to all my sisters and aunts and like amina can you please bring for me also what you gave <laughs> ah, to your sister? That is very you know so yeah we get uh, exposed to all these different ideas oh, that's from nice. our quickly friends yeah Perfect. so what about the preparation for the Eid of Fatah, are there any specific preparation that you do in India that is different from Kuwait? In terms of food, you mean? Food or anything that you do as a custom, so please. Well, she must tell you about uh, Sevilla, the, the sweet that we prepare. Okay. Yes, so that's a that's a sweet dish. That's a dish for Eid al-Fitr especially. Okay. Right? So different Eid have different sweet dish. Mm -hmm. But the Eid al-Fitr has Sevilla. Mm -hmm. And so it's made out of milk and uh, unfortunately some sugar. But I've tried to replace, you know, with healthy eating. Yeah, you can Honey. use it. You can Honey. use it with coconut sugar also. <laughs> coconut sugar. Yeah. Or there's also something called the jaggery uh, sugar. Yeah. So I use that. But it's very hard. How do you break it? It's powdered. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. uh, and then, so that's with little uh, raisins uh -huh. and uh, with some nuts, and it's the perfect. It's called shirkhuma. And when do you serve it? Is this something in the in the morning or? As soon as guests coming. 
after uh, Salat al Eid, then uh, we will have uh, gatherings and people will celebrate and people will visit each other. Okay. So the, the tradition of visiting your family and friends. Uh, and this is something common in the whole Indian Muslim community. Yeah, yes. yes. Everybody Celebration everybody. of Eid is for people yeah. to get together and okay. uh, of course Eid, uh, yeah. another important... Uh, uh, are you do that day, as well? Yes. Uh, ah, of course. Uh, that you could give money for the children. Well, she's tried to be innovative there. <laughs> <laughs> so what we try to do that you do to he's he's being very modest actually it's uh, so i did bring the gifts but it is he who uh, you know very meticulously puts all the names okay this we try to list out all the children in the community so and the yeah. friends <laughs> right. with their age group uh -huh. and then he says okay we have all these toys that we've got mm -hmm. so we take the toy and we put it against okay this child gets this all one, right. according to their age right, right? So in the after the Eid al-Fitr namaz, he has this big two bags, and all the children call. The like, kids know that you read uh, after Salat al-Eid, you come to Uncle Sahib, and okay. you will get your. Uh, okay, gift. that's good, nice. Good. That's so good. instead of money, we try to give something that they can use, uh -huh. and then remember that they got it from. Like us. what? So old, mostly their toys. So like girls would get hoopla hoops to do that, yeah. or you know, making bracelets. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything that we can find which we think children might find interesting. Uh, this is very interesting <laughs> and this is make the children really happy and celebrating, getting together, spending a good time together. This is something really good and I encourage all the reviewers that uh, especially in aid that we could get together and spend a good time together. Dr. Mohammed, yes. can you pass me the Oh, so please? then the food is ready. Yes. Please go ahead. Ooh. So, already smells so <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Not only your dish, also there's oh, yes. ah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I'm the only one who is hungry then. <laughs> so do you have any places that you would like to visit in, in the holy month of Ramadan in Kuwait? Is there any specific that place that you, you would like to visit? Or well, what I would advise to everyone is uh, the masjid is the right place exactly. to visit in uh, yeah. Ramadan. That is the time when you don't have workload, Correct. you have less stress in the school, and you have to focus on ibadah exactly as much as you can absolutely so do you have i'm, I'm assuming and I'm probably i'm sure that you have a lot of advices to our dear viewers to, that you would like to share with us so please go ahead i don't know what advice so you mean like related to ramadan please go ahead um so i think a good reminder would be that we sometimes forget that we think Ramadan is a festival for food. Correct. But it's actually a festival for fasting. Correct. Right? So, so when people tell me, oh, after Ramadan, I gained six kilos. <laughs> you know? How come? Like, how come? You've been fasting for 30 days how could or at gain? least 10 to 9 hours a day and you're still gaining weight. So that tells me there's something wrong right. the way you're fasting, yes. right? So um, I always lose around three kilos every Ramadan. That's good. And then I gain them in the next three months. Okay. Right? This is important. To <laughs> yes. So thank you, okay. sweetie. Oh, oh my gosh, it looks yummy. It looks so good. It smells and looks uh, Perfect. yummy. Too. Yes. <laughs> this is yours. Thank you so much, Eva. Bon Please, thank, thank, you. thank you. So should we dig in? Of course. Please go Can ahead. Can we start with some salt if you have? Okay. Uh, do yeah, you sure. have some? I'll bring See? this one. So we're going to apply <laughs> the piece of information that I'm going to give us to really start with the salt. Yes. All right. Always. always so please, please go ahead. Talking about that we gain uh, a lot of weight. Right. So I think it is important to remember that it's not about eating from iftar to suhoor. Correct. It's about eating iftar and then after six hours yes. or so, eating suhoor. Exactly. Right? So you go from three meals a day to two meals a mm -hmm. day. Um, I think that is something I'd ask everyone to remember. Okay. And for me personally, I, I think Ramadan is um, time for identifying mm -hmm. your dependencies. Okay. And what do I mean by that? So for instance, I'll give you my example. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of my friends tell me that during Ramadan we are so like tired, tired. and my head is hurting yes, yeah. because we're not eating. Mm -hmm. I said, no. This is not a reason. This is not true. The reason why your head is hurting is because maybe you're dependent on something like caffeine. Correct. And not drinking caffeine 
makes your head hurt. So it's the withdrawal symptom. Okay. Fasting doesn't make you weak, exactly. doesn't make you tired. Yes. It only leaves enough energy for you because you're not eating, you're Correct. not wasting any any energy digesting the food. Correct. So all your energy is now in your brain. Mm -hmm. So you should have high levels of alertness, Correct. high levels of body energy for activities. Correct. Correct. So if you're not happening, if that's not happening, then there's something wrong. I know this wrong. is for you. And also, you know, what I know is that like, if you want to like have full energy after you break your, 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 your futur, like your, your fasting, uh, you can drink coconut water because coconut water ha is like, I think it's better than whey than the caffeine itself. Right, mm -hmm. true. So uh, exactly, find a replacement for caffeine. So what I did is when I found out that I was so dependent on caffeine and tea, mm -hmm. um, I was like, no, it has to stop. Uh, I haven't had caffeine in 35 years now. Correct. Mashallah. Yeah. Mashallah. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, At I, all? I generally joke like 35 years, 7 months and 3 days. Wow. <laughs> so you start with salt? Yes, I'm let me offer you. I'm, I, I, I'm, you. I'm assuming that you are ready to eat. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, the saliva is like yes, it's so you, you uh, taste, yeah. Just for the tip of and your tongue. Tip. Yes. Yes. And the wait juices. for it. Ah, wait so. for it. It's coming, right? The okay. saliva is going to yeah, come. It's coming. It's going to come. So this is taste. Himalayan salt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I also use Himalayan salt yeah. in there. And now you're ready to eat your food. Okay. Let's do this. So while Anna, she's going to try the food, Mr. Packer, I believe that we talked about that you work at a community that regard the food, that you give food to other people, correct? Yes, you know, in fact, uh, the point I was trying to highlight is that, you know, it's so nice that we have these traditions of Gapka and people gather and Correct. the whole family get together and we have such uh, beautiful meals and gatherings, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is so great. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, sometimes deep inside, it also comes to our attention the amount of food mm -hmm that people are the quantity. preparing and the food that is going to waste. Yeah. Uh, if that continues to happen, it is so uh, not reverse of the whole itself. principle yes. of uh, the month of Ramadan yes. and the, the concept of fasting. I mean, yes. you're doing it to purify your body and your mind and Absolutely. your soul. Yeah. Right. We cannot have, we should have, all, all of us should be more yeah, disciplined right. yeah. in the amount of food that we we consume and we waste. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and for that reason, that's what I was telling you about, is when we host these gatherings ourselves, we're very conscious about how many people are going to attend, mm -hmm. yes. how much food we are going to prepare based on number of people who are going to come. Mm -hmm. uh, it does sound a little formal, but at least we can then prepare according to the numbers. You're right. And uh, another beautiful concept <coughs> about Kuwait, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about the rest of the neighborhood, I live in Salwa. Mm. There's so many refrigerators outside people's houses at block 10, block 11, block 9. You're right. right. Yeah. Whatever, so whatever extra food, over, yeah. there. we have it packed in boxes. Yes. But and every night, we make sure that the, the else, messenger puts it in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. else can that eat it. That is the whole idea. Correct. Yes. Share your food yes. and make sure that each food, uh, all the food it goes to uh, people who are really And after it. that, also God will reward you for that. Exactly. Because you fed someone who's really hungry. Correct. Okay. Which so, is a great message for today's uh, episode. Correct. So, Mr. Taqib, you please go ahead and eat. Uh, tell me about the food. I'm oh. waiting to do this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, sorry, I couldn't wait. It was too tempting. Exactly. So I go ahead. ahead. It's yummy. Thank so you. So we would oh, like you so to thank much. you. Exactly. We, both of us would like to thank you for your time as well as for all the valuable information that you provide for us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for ha being here. Thank you for eating and telling me good uh, things. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be with you and talk to you about this holy month. And, uh, How about a pleasure? And, you know, I, yeah. I don't know who's written this, but uh, he said, if you wish to see the world happy, then remember day by day to spread the seeds of kindness as you pass along the way. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. So dear viewers, we're going to see you in a different episode, choosing another country. Until then, please be safe. Bye-bye.